Yo, what's going on YouTube? How you guys doing? So today we are going to do something kind of new and kind of interesting and something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Essentially, today's video is going to be me putting together a build that is something that a brand new player could run. I just recently did a video talking about who to level up first if you're a new player, both as killer and survivors. If you guys haven't already seen that, feel free to check it out. I'll leave a card and like a link to it. However, if you guys have already watched it and you're looking to get started as killer, you would know that Bubba is the first choice. My boy Bubba. So I touched base on that, like who to actually start with, but I didn't really talk about like builds. Because here's the thing, when you're brand new to the game, you're not going to have all these perks. Like I, have, like, I have every single perk in the game. Like, you're not going to have all these options to pick from, right? Like, you're just going to have the non-teachables as well as Bubba's perks, which is not very many. So, I threw together a build here real quick that is basically a bunch of non-teachables. And, well, aside from, like, the one perk that belongs to Bubba. But it's basically his perks as well as non-teachables. And we're basically going to try to make a build work with this as a build would, would work for a new player. So I basically threw together a build filled with perks that are non-teachable and also one perk that belongs to Bubba, so you'll have it on him. So we have no perks from other killers. This is all just Bubba's perks as well as baseline perks. And this build is designed more around you being a new player as, uh, as opposed to you being an experienced player. Just to briefly explain every single perk in this build and what they do, let's go through it. Spies from the Shadow basically makes it so that if any survivor pisses off a crow within 36 meters of you, you get a noise notification and it has a cooldown of 5 seconds. This is just a very simple tracking perk that doesn't really take any skill to use and is very straightforward. Sloppy Butcher is up next and this perk is kind of the general slowdown perk. It's probably the best slowdown perk that is non-teachable. It basically makes it so that anybody that you hit with your basic attack or your hammer as Bubba gets inflicted with mangled and hemorrhage, which means they bleed more often. And also the most important thing is that it takes them longer to heal. So everyone that you hit, you can leave them alone and go chase someone else because it'll take them even longer than normal to heal themselves. Unrelenting's up next, and this is probably the most replaceable of all the perks in this build. But if you're a new player, this can definitely come in handy because it makes it so that if you miss a swing, the cooldown that you have before you can start running or swinging or doing actions again is reduced by a lot. So you're significantly less punished for missing an attack. And lastly, we have Barbecue and Chili. This one should be obvious. This is probably the best perk in the game for Killer overall, especially as a new player, because it gives you up to double blood points. Every single time you hook a survivor, you, a, a different unique survivor, you get a stack. So if you hook all four survivors at least once, you get four stacks. And at the end of the game, you get double blood points as long as you have four stacks. You, you, you get 25% blood points per stack. As well as the fact that after you hook somebody, you can see auras of survivors farther than 40 meters away from the hook. So it's pretty good overall. We're also going to be running some very basic add-ons as well. Spark plug and veggie oil are basically just slightly faster charge speed and slightly faster cooldown of the chainsaw. Nothing serious. I figured that I'd run common since as a new player, you'll probably still have some common add-ons. So if we back up and just take a look at this build, I think this is a really good build if you're like actually like brand new. Like if you're very, very new, you know, like very low amount of hours. If you're someone that's a little more experienced, right? Like say you have some teachable perks, you know, like it's not just Bubba and the non-teachables. Like you might have a couple perks from, from other killers and maybe you have some experience in the game. It wouldn't be crazy to change some of these perks out. For instance, I don't think Spies from the Shadow is necessarily the best tracking perk, although I do think it's the easiest one to use if you are brand new to the game for instance me personally i would use whispers over spies but whispers is more difficult to use than spies so as a new player it's not going to do much for you unless you know how to use it the same goes with unrelenting i think unrelenting is a very replaceable perk however because i'm basing this around people that are brand new uh I i'm gonna leave it on but if you're someone that's a little bit more experienced you can feel free to replace either one of these perks with something else it's uh, basically up to your discretion. Oh, also, I feel like I need to uh, play the part as well. So let me go ahead and take off all my prestige clothes. There we go. Now we're looking like a fresh Bubba. Now we're looking like a fresh Bubba. Hell yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's give it a try. Okay, let's do it. Ratchet shop. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, just to say this out loud right now, I don't think we're going to get much unrelenting value unless I just like happen to play like an idiot and swing at things that I shouldn't. But, you know, ideally, I'm, I shouldn't do that because I have a lot of experience in this game. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hi, Nancy. Do you care about your life? Okay, you have sprint burst. I see. I see. I see. I see. See, okay, here's a really important thing about Bubba. Like right here, it's really important to know to go for a basic attack because she has a pallet nearby. A really, a really big thing that you, that you have to learn to do with Bubba is to not go for chainsaws all the time. 
Like, it's not always good to go for a chainsaw, and that's the biggest thing that you're probably going to mess up on early on as a bubble player, is knowing when to go for chainsaws and knowing when to just, you know, bite the bullet and go for an M1 attack. It's not necessarily bad to go for an M1 attack, and you should really only be going for chainsaws if the survivor is, like, very clearly in an open field. So, uh, yeah. That's a big thing that you got to kind of keep an eye on. What was that? That, that? that was a generator explosion. Also, it's important to know that Spies from the Shadows notification it gives you is kind of an explosion like that. Like that sound right there. That was a generator again. But that's kind of the same sound you get from Spies. It's like a, it's like an explosion, but then you also like see a crow. So make sure to keep an eye out for that as well. If you hear an explosion, make sure to like look around and see what's around you. All right, I think I got that gen done. There was two of them on it for sure. I was going to say, I know he was there. Hey, look, unrelenting value. Check it out, dude. We got him. See, even right here is not close enough to get a chainsaw. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Bubba right now has really, really bad acceleration on his chainsaw. So even that was not close enough to get a chainsaw. Which might seem ridiculous, but that's one of the reasons why Bubba's one of the worst killers in the game. However, when you're playing this game, well, there's Spice from the Shadow. When you're playing this game at like a lower level, you uh, aren't, you don't have to worry quite so much about survivors being like this. Like these survivors are clearly like decent at the game, right? They like understand looping, they understand pallets, they know how to play them. Survivors, whenever you're brand new to the game, aren't gonna be like this. So you're gonna have a lot more opportunities to chainsaw. This is a big reason why Bubba is not a great survivor at the higher ranks and why he's a lot better at the lower ranks is because at the lower ranks people mess up way more and you have way more opportunities ah! did he just dead hard i don't even know you have way more opportunities to get chainsaws because people miss position way more they don't really understand looping they don't really understand maps and how to play them so you won't see a crazy okay that guy just got in a locker you won't see a crazy amount of uh of chainsaw opportunities here but was it the same guy or did he leave i don't actually know i have to see he left damn 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 i thought it might have been one of those guys that i was looking at right there but i was 100 percent sure and I, and I and i let him unhook that sucks i should not have checked that oops that's okay though very very minor mistake we we are, we are a-okay hi nancy i know you have sprint burst wow Wow, you really fooled me with that sprint burst. Wow, you really got me. See, like, right there. She knows, like, this survivor's smart, and she knows to not, like... It, had she not taken that window, I would have I would have been able to get a chainsaw, but she knew that, so she just took the window and ate an M1 attack instead of, uh, you know, getting chainsawed. So, again, these survivors at this, like, higher level of play are, like, smarter, and they, like... They're going to be very hard to chainsaw. I'm probably not going to get very many chainsaws at all. It's probably going to be mostly M1 attacks. But that's also not a bad thing because that's why we have Sloppy Butcher. Sloppy Butcher helps us because every single person that we hit with an M1 like this takes longer to heal, which means they stay they, they stay injured longer, which means if we find them later, we can kill them easier. If they don't heal, if they do heal, it takes longer to do it. It just overall helps us in like a lot of different ways. Well, she kind of messed up here and put herself in a bad position so we can chainsaw her. And we're actually going to slug right now because this guy's still on the hook. And these guys are doing gens before they're saving, which means we can punish that by slugging. This is another big thing, uh, by the way, as far as killer strategy, which is not really important when you're new. But as you get more experience, you'll, you'll start to learn it. A lot of people complain about survivors, uh, you know, not saving and instead doing gens and gen rushing and all that. But if you can manage to down survivors decently quickly, you can punish it super hard by doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Which is basically just like slugging and then like defending your slug and a down guy. Where is this guy? Wow. See, now this guy's dead. We downed him. This guy got healed. We remember that he was down over here. So now we know where they are. And bam. That's how you counter gen rushing right there. Survivors split up and get on gens. You just fucking slug them, you know? I think this guy had dead hard. Yep, he does have dead hard. We're gonna down him real quick. We can hook him, cause uh, I don't know where the last guy is, and I'm not gonna like patrol around and look for him, and I have no idea. Okay, he's on the other survivor. That's okay though. That is okay. We're gonna kick this, cause it's getting close to done. 
We know they picked them up over there because that's where I downed them. So they were over there a second ago. They could well, they just full healed. So yeah, because that guy, because that guy got healed again, we know they're still there. Healing takes a very long time against Sloppy. So they they, they went both ways. Their scratch marks both ways. But I'm gonna chase this guy because he's kind of heading towards the hook a little. Hey buddy, how you doing? Is he giving up? Is he just giving up on life? I see scratch marks there. He's going for the unhook. We're gonna go get him. And you know what? We might as well just end the game. We might as well just end the game, shall we? Why even bother going on? We might as well just end it, you know? We get in the position to end it, we might as well just take advantage. It's either that, or we chase him around for an hour, you know? I'm probably gonna get decisive strike here, but that's okay. It really doesn't matter. I can still just chase him down and kill him again, so it doesn't really matter. He might go heal the one guy, but then even still, if he does that, I'm just gonna slug him and then get the other guy. It's just, it's gonna be a never-ending cycle if he does. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Okay. Well, this guy really wants to pull it through, dude. He really wants to pull it out. He really do be trying, though. He's a fighter. He ain't giving up. Well. <laughs> well, I guess your best wasn't good enough. And that's it, boys. That's it. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the perks this game didn't really give us a lot of value. Like, spies didn't really do much for us. I mean, we got a lot of barbecue value. We got a lot of information from barbecue. I think barbecue was really the part that did the, the, the most for us this game. Barbecue as well as sloppy. Because barbecue basically told us that every survivor was staying on gens. Every time we hooked someone, we just saw survivors across the map on, like, different generators. So we knew they weren't playing super altruistically. And we used that in our strategy by slugging and then, you know, keeping an eye on them and punishing them, and, and punishing them for not being altruistic. And then he ended up winning, uh, 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 winning because of it. So, you know, it works out in the end anyway. And look at that. We even got all four stacks of barbecue. Tons of blood points. I'm assuming this will be at least a pip. I mean, if you're in, like, if you're in, like, the, like, gray ranks, like, rank 20 to rank 15, I'm sure it'll, it'll probably be even, be, even be a double pip. So, I would say that was a, that was a pretty good match. GG, boys. GG. All right. Let's see what's going on here. We actually didn't even pit, but that's okay. It does not matter. I will take it as a win regardless. And, uh, yeah. I mean, not really much to say. Wow, this guy lost a spooky med kit. Oh, man, that's actually sad. That's depressing. That's like an ancient relic, man. Oh, well, GG's, boys. GG's. That's M3. I did not mean to say M3. I meant to say that. That's what I meant to say. GG's. All right, boys, we're just going to give this one another go. I feel like a one-game sample size is never enough. I don't think a two-game sample size is, you know, really a crazy amount either, but I think a two-game sample size is at least better than a one. So let's give it another try. Let's see how it works. Let's see if we can get some value out of some of these perks. And, uh, yeah, let's go. Okay, Azarov's resting place. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so we'll see how this one goes. Um... This is actually a pretty good map for killer, to be honest with you. This is like one of those maps that people call one of like the best killer maps in the game just because of like the shape of it. it makes it really easy to kind of choke point survivors on the one side of the map, especially if you can get some downs. Like if we get a situation like last game where we basically can get like a couple downs and defend them, that is insanely strong on this map. Like really, really strong. Yo, look at this unrelenting value. Look at this. Look at this. Yo. <laughs> It, okay, not not even joking, not even joking. That's something that people call unrelenting tech right there. When you swing at a pallet and then they try to punish you for swinging early and then do another loop and then you just hit them because of your reduced cooldown, literally called unrelenting tech. That's like a, a major thing. And I'm actually, that's actually hilarious that I managed to pull it off so quickly, dude. Getting that unrelenting value, you know? Do you have sprint burst or what's your deal? This guy really... F Yo, he's running to nowhere, though. There's nothing out here. This dude literally just sprint burst into nothing. Like, he saved his sprint burst and then ran it and went literally nowhere. Okay, sounds good to me, dude. Well, here's another one of those situations where, like, Survivor goes to an open field. Easy down with Bubba. It's pretty okay to slug here. The whole team's here, so that's pretty nice. 
We can down her again. We got a Nia here. She's taking forever. What the hell is she? Okay. Okay, then. All right. Well, you know, sometimes, uh, you know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't, I don't even know what to say. I'm going to be honest with you. I, but, but, normally, I have something to say, like, almost all the time. Like, usually, I can't shut up because I'm usually always talking. But today, I'm out of shit. I gotta be honest with you, man. I'm out of shit. I don't know what to say. I am out of shit. I, don't, I have no words for that. All right, we're gonna hook her real quick over here because we want to be able to get back to that basement and defend it. Doesn't look like they're going for it anyway. This team doesn't seem very good. I'm gonna be honest with you. This team feels like one of those red rank teams that plays like a team that's like rank 20. Like, I don't know what this Lori's been doing. Like, I don't know if she thinks I can't see her because I can. But, I mean, I guess we'll find out in a minute. Like, she didn't even go to that pallet. She went to this one instead and got hit. Yeah, these guys don't really know what they're doing very well. But this is one of those situations where on this map, you can... Okay, she's, like, kind of staying. You know what? I'll chase her. I'll chase her. I'll go ahead. Honestly, I probably could have ended the game here had I just defended these hooks. But I'm not going to. I, I would rather let it play out. I don't think these survivors are going to be... I'm not trying to be mean, but I don't think these survivors are going to be like a major threat. So I feel like we can use this game as a little bit more of a, you know, a little bit more of a, of a, of a learning tool, if you will, you know, because we, we went out to end it in two seconds. We can let them get some blood points. We can get some blood points ourselves. Damn, I was trying to get her before she healed, but we still got her. Where are you going? Where are you going? No pallet. You're dead. You're dead. Do you have dead art? Nope dead dead oh another big thing as a like newer killer player you have to make sure you're not afraid of getting stunned at pallets man that's a big thing there's a big big thing that like big that like that like newer players make mistakes of very often i i cover this in my pallet video again if you guys oh we got some spies value so we know that guy's going for the unhook over here but uh if, if you guys have ever watched my pallet video that i made i made like a guide to pallet videos and i talk about it a lot there but you know, it can always use a use a, a good old repeating. Don't be afraid of getting stunned. Like you see how right there, I'm just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm swinging in this pallet. You know, it gets you hits, man. There's a lot of times that you can get hits. Like how many hits this game have I gotten just from swinging at a pallet? You know, whereas like a big mistake you can do is this, where you like stop and like let them drop the pallet to avoid getting stunned. Like don't get me wrong, it's not always wrong to respect pallets. Like it's not always bad to do, but most of the time. You want to just not give a shit. You want to just run at the pallet. Don't care. You know, if you get stunned, you get stunned. And just, you know, swing if they're close enough. If they're close enough to swing at them, fucking swing at them, you know? Because a lot of times it'll get you hits. So that's a big thing to focus on when you're newer. That's why, again, I'm going to reference the last video. That's why when it came to the order of operations of, like, who you level. Like, who you level and in what order. That's why I recommended Billy so early on. Because I think having Enduring is very nice. This guy apparently wants to be chased, which is okay with me. I, I mean, these guys are like, they're like waving on me to chase them, but then none of them actually know how to like play chase as well. So then I just down them instantly, which is really odd. I'm not really sure what they're trying to accomplish, to be honest with you, but I'll just, I'll take the free downs, I guess. And honestly, I, I don't think this is entirely inaccurate to how games are going to be at lower rank. This, this kind of feels like a group of, uh, lower rank survivors right here honestly like this feels like how a game would probably play out it might even be honestly with matchmaking the way it currently is it could even be that way okay so barbecue again super valuable because it gives you all the information i knew there was two people here healing two people healed right here under this hook and then one person ran over this way i don't know where these two people went so i'm just gonna go for this one guy this guy seemed like he was heading towards this gen and he was because because I saw him uh, uh, running towards the gen, I can kind of assume that he isn't, you know, going to leave it. Also, I completely lost track of that Nia because I was trying to talk and chase at the same time. That was my fault. Ignore that. Ignore that entirely. It never happened. Never happened. And we have another chase right here. We might as well take it. Might as well take it. I mean, she's right here. Totally fine. Totally fine. See, that's again, like, right there's another one of those situations where it's totally okay to just eat the sun, you know? It is totally okay. 
Because had I not eaten the stun there, like, had I, like, been afraid of that pallet, she could have taken advantage and, like, kept running and then looped Shaq a bunch. Sometimes you just got to eat the pallet, you know? This Meg seems like the only one that is actually, like, decent at chase. The other ones seem to be really bad, but she seems to be, like, like okay. So maybe it'll be good to chase her. I mean, it would be bad to chase her in terms of strategy, but, I mean... I'm pretty sure we're going to win this game no matter what, so I'm kind of just trying to have some fun. All right, we, we got spies there. We know that guy's running across the map. I could slug this guy again and run back again, but I'm just going to hook him instead. There's a hook right here. We could hook this guy, and then we can run back to that dude that's down. Get to him. Like, you know, they're going to heal him up real quick, but then we'll be able to get there and chase him away. We'll be able to see where they go, so they're not going to make it very far. And honestly, we've gotten pretty good value out of, I think, every single perk this game, man. Like, Sloppy has been giving us constant value because, you know, just anytime you M1 someone, it just... So, so Sloppy is such a good just slap it on and get value perk, you know? Like, you don't really need to do anything special, you know? I mean, I, I, I guess you got to make sure that you're using your basic attacks. But on, on a killer like Bubba, you know, where, like, your chainsaw isn't extremely... I mean, his chainsaw is pretty good, but you have a lot of situations where you have to M1. So on a killer like Bubba, it's really, like... You kind of just slap it on and play, you know? You don't really have to think about it too hard. That's kind of what all these perks are like. All these perks I'm running right now, are they're not like... They're not perks where you have to think very hard. They're very just slap it on and get value, you know? Unrelent things like that. Uh, sloppy Butchers like that. Spies is like that. I think, I think Barbecue might be the only one where you actually have to, like... Take in the information you get and process it, right? Like, you see the auras and you have to make a strategy around it. That's really the only one. Like, every other perk is just slap on and get value. So, this dude's running to the left. Hatch is going to spawn soon. I can't really guarantee that I get this guy before he gets hatched. But if he gets hatched, that's okay, too. I mean, this this match should get me a lot of blood points. And I, I, as a new player, I feel like that's the main thing you should be looking for. Ooh, hey, how you doing? How you doing? As a new player, I feel like that's the main thing you should be looking for is basically blood points. There's scratch marks here. I think I just saw her behind this tree too, didn't I? Oh, I did. Oh, I said her. I said her and it's a big hunky David. <laughs> but yeah, as a new player, blood points are really like the, the the most important thing, I think, anyways. So really, I don't know. I don't I don't I wouldn't even worry too much about pipping and like pipping up and stuff when you're brand new. I would just worry about getting some blood points, getting some levels, unlocking different people and different perks. And hey, I mean this this match, uh this match looks like it went pretty well, honestly. GG's. All right, GG boys. How we looking? How we looking? Well, we pipped. And we uh, almost double pipped. But we were one short on the chaser. But look at that. We got a fuck ton of blood points. We got a shit ton of blood points. I mean, if you count the barbecue, we got like 56k. Which is, again, that's a lot. Especially if you're like a newer player, man. That's a lot. That's going to get you a lot of levels. This is, uh, yeah. This, this, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much the wave, boys. GG's. GG's. All right, guys. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys can learn something. Hopefully, if you're new to the game, you can you can see this and maybe be able to mimic it and do some things that help, you, help yourself out and help you get started in a way that's good and valuable as opposed to just going in blind and just clicking a bunch of buttons and hoping that something turns out. I think this gives you at least some sort of a sense of direction. Um, please, please, please let me know what you guys think of the, this video and if you want me to do more stuff like it. I'm thinking about doing more and expanding on this and maybe doing like a build for like the next killers that I recommend leveling up using like very limited amounts of teachables and you know trying different builds that are basically useful for people that are new to the game or maybe people that don't have all the teachables yet. Because I, I feel like most builds I do are assuming you have every perk on every killer. And I know very few people has that. So just let me know what you think. Uh, if you guys have any ideas of stuff like this that you want to see, please let me know. I'm open to everything. Just leave it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Sub to the channel as well if you want. If you want to support, you don't have to. Feel free though. And thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope you guys have a good rest of your night. I'm getting out of here. See ya. Take care. See ya. I'm out of here. See ya. I'll see you later. See ya.